Hey, it's Ashley. Thanks for joining me today to check out Rootly, the AI-powered on-call and incident response platform. I'll start off by showing you how to manage an incident in Slack using Rootly, and then we'll dive into the web platform where you can see how to configure and customize Rootly and how to interact with your incident data. So let's just get started. Starting an incident in Slack with Rootly is really easy. You just use a slash command slash Rootly new. And a form's gonna pop up here, which is fully customizable. So let's say we have some customers reporting that our website is down, but we don't really have any more information. That's totally fine. We can just fill in what we have. And we'll click create to get started. So really is going to create us a dedicated Slack channel where we can start responding to our incident. And as you can see, we've already got some tools to get us started. So one of the first things we typically are going to want to do is assign roles. I'm going to assign myself as the commander. So now that I'm assigned as the commander, I've got some tips here that let me know what my job is. And you'll see I have some action items already pre-assigned to me to help me get started managing the incident like updating the summary and assigning any other outstanding roles. We also have a couple integrations that have already kicked off here. So you can see we have a Zoom room spun up and a JIRA issue ready for tracking. You can also access the web version of Ruli right at the top in your pin post at any time. Another example of a way that you can interact with an integration is through using workflows. So these are automations that you can use at any point while you manage an incident. You can access them by clicking the Run Workflow button in the pinned post right here, or you can use slash Rootly workflow to surface them. I'm gonna pull some information out of Datadog that might help me diagnose the cause of this incident using our Fetch Core System Metrics workflow. So as you can see, Rootly has pulled some information straight from Datadog in here to help us investigate. As an incident progresses, the AI is gathering context to help keep everyone on the same page and help us resolve incidents faster. So let's take a look at some of the things that we could do with Rootly AI. Say we're a new member of the team just joining this incident and we're a little lost with what's going on. We can use the slash command slash Rootly catch up and Rootly will catch us up on the incident and let us know what's going on. Cool. And we can actually use this to update our incident summary as well. So you can always generate a fresh summary with AI, so it's really easy to tell where things are at. Ruli's AI can do more than just keep people updated though. We can actually use it to even draft comms like a customer facing update. So let's give that a try. So as you can see, here it goes, writing an email for us. Perfect. As we move through the incident, we can also track our ongoing tasks and follow-up items using emojis. So for example, let's say we're gonna ask Andre to, can you please ship the customer email? We want to make sure that this is tracked as a task. So what we can do is actually respond to it with an emoji and star it. You can see that Rootly responded by adding a check mark. And now if we look at our pin messages and check our action items, you can see that there's a task right here assigned to Andre to ship the customer email. Now at this point, I'm a little lost and I'm not sure if the incident has actually been resolved or if we're still working on it. So why don't we check in with the Rootly bot and ask it where we're at. Oh, cool. So it looks like the rollback worked and we're back to a stable state, but we do have some post incident research to do to figure out why this happened in the first place. An example might be, let's look into why that PR got past our tests. Now this is something that's a task that we want to do after the incident, so we're going to mark this as a follow-up item. That we can use the memo emoji and it'll be tracked as a follow-up item to be done after the incident. So 
Now that we've resolved the problem itself, I think it's fair to say we can mark this incident as resolved. Another slash command, simply rootly resolve. We can either fill this in ourselves manually, or we can generate the answer using AI to describe how exactly the incident was resolved. Cool. So now you can see we're ready to run our retrospective and we'll hop over to the web platform to see what happens to all of this data that we've now tracked during the incident and how we can kick off the retrospective process. Here we are. So we start off on the incident page where you can see all of the info that we collected during the incident is all right here. You have a complete timeline of what happened during the incident and you can track things like what caused it, the teams involved, the services impacted and so on. These are all customizable fields, so you can really track whatever data is important to you. Now, let's take a look around the web dashboard and get to know it before we jump back into our specific incident. Here on the main page, you can see an overview of all of your active incidents and some high-level data about your incidents over time. You've got some resources at the bottom too, so that you can always stay ahead of the curve when it comes to your processes. Next, let's take a look at the incidents tab. So this is where all of your incidents are stored in aggregate. You can see incidents by uh, their current state, so whether they're active, mitigated, resolved, and so on. As you can see, we have ours right here. And you can also really easily search and filter. So let's take a look back in our incident that we just managed, and we'll kick off the retrospective process we're prompted to go through the entire process of running a retrospective. And this isn't just as simple as filling in the doc and running a meeting, but we've really defined the entire process of what post-incident learning should be for this type of incident. In this case, the process that we would follow is to gather and confirm our data and then create the retrospective document. And you can see that we also have integrations within the web platform as well. So we like to keep all of our retrospective docs in Confluence and Rootly has actually automatically created this for us. So this is our preferred template. Rootly's filled in all of the information that we need, including the roles, the summary, and a full timeline. Rootly's able to automatically detect key moments and add them to the incident timeline, but if you did want to add them manually, you can also do so using the push pin emoji in Slack. Cool. So as you can see, the next steps are to host the meeting, create our follow-up action items, and share the finalized retrospective. So if we go into our configuration tab for retrospectives, you can see that we can actually create custom retrospective processes with any steps we want to define based on the type and severity of the incident. We won't go through all of that right now because we're going to try to keep this moving along quickly, but it's a good thing to know. You can also set conditions to automatically skip retros or make them mandatory. Now, any good retro is going to result in action items. When we talk about action items, we mean a few different things. Tasks are the items to be completed during an incident, and follow-ups are action items to be completed after the incident. So for example, in the one that we just ran, checking on how that PR ended up getting past our testing. You can view all of your action items in aggregate in the action items page. So you can see across your entire org how many outstanding tasks are related to active incidents and how many follow-up tasks are outstanding. So here's the one that we created during the incident we just ran. We can assign this to a user to help with accountability and make sure it gets done. We can also assign a priority level and like we talked about, because of our syncing across JIRA or any um, task management integrations you prefer to use, this action item has already generated a JIRA subtask off of the main JIRA ticket for the incident itself. If we mark this task as complete in JIRA, it will be marked as complete in Rootly and vice versa thanks to bidirectional syncing. So let's go ahead and we'll mark it done. Cool. Now, all of this information that's collected during all of your incidents is also stored in the metrics tab, and you can view and interact with your data using customizable dashboards. So not only does Rootly make it easier to manage the incident on an incident by incident basis, but you also get the benefit because you're managing all of your incidents through one platform, you get access to all of this data that's compiled for you. 
and you do have the ability to share these dashboards and adjust the permissions for who's able to view them. So you can even create a public link if you wanted to share these with maybe some of your top customers, or you can limit them to specific individuals or specific teams. Okay, and there's one more thing that I wanna show you today in this demo, and that is our most requested and newest feature, which would be Rootly On Call. The ability to manage your on-call alerts and schedules all within Rootly in the same platform where you manage your incidents. So if we head into Rootly On Call, let's first take a look at schedules and how easy it is to create an on-call schedule using this tool. All we do is create a new schedule with the button, and something that's unique about Rootly On Call, as opposed to some of the more traditional paging tools out there, is we allow you to create pager schedules, not just for your services, but for teams and individuals as well. So let's use a communications team as an example. We'll create an on-call schedule for our comms team for any time they need to be involved in incidents. So we're just gonna name the schedule, communications will do just fine. And we can actually filter who we wanna add by team. So because our communications team is set up in Rootly, we can just grab them and add everybody there. And you'll see we'll automatically get a preview of what this schedule will look like in the calendar on the right. We can really easily adjust the rotation cycle, so maybe we want to go daily for a more frequent handoff on this team. And you can choose exactly what days and when you want this to be active, and even what time and time zone you want the handoff between shifts to take place. So we'll save the schedule. But now, in order for this to be active and actually receive alerts, it needs to be assigned to an escalation policy. So when we head into our escalation policies, we can really easily create a new one here, and we'll call this the incident communications policy. And we're gonna notify the schedule that we just created for the comms team. But what we can actually do in this same editor is we can also notify individual users and Slack channels. So maybe every time our comms team gets paged, we also want to post a message in our incident comms Slack channel. Perfect. And now as a secondary step, what are we going to do if nobody acknowledges this page after five minutes? Maybe we'll have a specific user, like the team's lead, notified directly. We can also choose to repeat this step as many times as we want until the alert is acknowledged. So in this case, let's say we just keep on paging five times until somebody picks that page up. Now, when they receive the page, it'll be through the Rootly mobile app, which can give you a phone call. And upon opening the page, you'll receive context for exactly what's going on and a direct link to the timeline and history of the incident so that you can jump in and get started right away. That is everything I'm gonna show you today when it comes to managing incidents and on-call schedules within Rootly. We are really just scratching the surface in terms of what you can do and how configurable things are. So if you would like to see more, make sure to book a demo and we can take you through a customized demo to show you any features and integrations you might be interested in learning more about. Thanks, bye.